From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. This is Captain Ramirez in Bluefield. Hello, Captain. Thanks for returning my call. Oh, you are now in San Juan del Perro? Yeah. Oh, soon you will know Nicaragua as well. Yeah, listen, Captain, I need your help. Can you get a plane down here for me? The one we bought has been wrecked. Oh, see, si, Senor Dollar. And if I were you, I'd come along with it. I, Senor? But I... A nice chance to add to your laurels, Captain, by making a couple of arrests. Criminal? Yeah. One of them a killer. <laughs> Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey in the transcribed adventures of the man with the action packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location San Juan del Perro, Nicaragua. The Universal Adjustment Bureau, Hartford, Connecticut. Following is the final accounting of expenses and report on my investigation of the sea legs matter. <laughs> Expense account item 18, one dollar American. Phone call to Captain Jose Ramirez to the Federal Maritime. A... I still can't spell it. Call it the Coast Guard. But a lot of things happened before I could make that call, like the fast plane trip that we made to San Juan del Perro in the hope of finding the yacht, the sea legs despite a big insurance claim based on its alleged loss at sea. Like the fact that our plane was wrecked for us by one Douglas Landfair, despite a big claim based on his alleged death at sea. Like our discovery of the yacht, carefully altered and repainted in an old shipyard. Our discovery of Ramon Gonzalez, a member of the crew who was supposed to have gone down with us. Come on, Mr. Bella, let's get out of here. Oh, no, Oscar. Not until I revive this Gonzalez character and make him talk. You must even have a friend around. Right, right, Oscar. Yeah. Huh? And with a gun and save Mr. Dolly's back. Well, well. Connie Lancer. Gun, gun. Not particularly. Stand still. I won't hesitate to pull this trigger. No, no, I guess you wouldn't. So you found the two legs. Did you ask to help you? Oh. Then you're familiar with Oscar Patrick Vladimir Pascal. Ask him, the chiseling money job. Please, please, how can you say such a thing about such a spell? Oh, shut up, Oscar. Thank you. Nice job you did at disguising the sea legs, Mrs. Lancer. If Oscar hadn't shown me where to find it, my husband and I would have it out to sea again. A new pose under a new Oh, yeah, and... sure, one of the oldest games in the business. And in the meantime, you would have collected $150,000 on a supposed loss, in addition to a quarter million on your husband, Douglas. Why did you have to come along, Johnny? I'm afraid you asked for it when you filed your claim. $400,000. We had to. We were in trouble. Oh, sure, because you spent every nickel you could get your hands on. No. We inherited the estate. I told Douglas. Oh, yeah, sure. To... All his fault. It's true. Well, that ain't the way I heard it. And I don't intend to believe it any more than I believe a couple of things you told me on the plane down here. You don't understand. Nobody has to lie. But remember how you sobbed as you told about the last radio contact with your husband when, as you put it, you could hear the rocks grinding away at the hull and the water pouring in overside as he desperately fought for his Johnny, life. Johnny, please. Well, I heard it a little different from Oscar here. The radio signal was suddenly cut off. That's all. No fancy sound effects, nothing. Oscar told you that. And what rocks, by the way, that smashed the sea legs? I flew out to the Baldero Islands and tried to find them. They were as non-existent as the wreckage that should have washed ashore in the Valdero current. I'm beginning to see some things, John. The mate or skipper or whatever you want to call him, who was supposed to have been with your husband, has been lost with a boat, Ramon Gonzalez. Well, as you can see, he wasn't quick enough when he attacked us here a minute ago, and I had to get a little rough with him. Johnny! Oh, if you're having a gun pointing at my back, stop kidding, Connie. You know more Johnny, than... Johnny, look out! Uh, me. Wait a minute, John! Uh, 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 he was going to kill me, Mr. Dollar, but uh, you were too good for him. Well, a lot of help you were. That is nice. Huh? Yeah, oh, yes, yes. Yeah. I think I'd better have it, Oscar, because... Well, I see Connie Lancer made a hasty exit from the city. She did? Well, what do you know about that? You didn't see her leave? Well, it's so dark in this old shipyard, and I was so worried about you, dear Mr. Dollar. Why, why don't you You should be. That? Plenty of worry. Huh? Look, why don't we get out of I needed only two things when I came down here, Oscar. Proof, both of them. Why don't we get out of this dreary place, Mr. Dollar? I'm talking to myself. Somewhere there's lies. Oh, shut up and listen. Thank you. 
I've found them both now. Proof that Douglas Lanzer never died in a wreck of the sea legs, and proof that the sea legs was never wrecked at all. Except for a couple of details, the case is closed. One of those details is you. Me? Oh, you mean paying me for all the unvaluable help I've been... Oh, how nice. I'll take it in 20 degrees. Oscar, I'm going to lay the cards right on the table. And the money? I'll find it to you. Now, listen to me. Connie Lance slipped away during our little ruckus here. But you could have stopped her as easily as you could have stopped this Gonzalez character from jumping me. She, she, she said she had a gun. A bluff. She didn't. But you did. Me? Oh, Mr. Dollar, I was... I spotted scared. that bulge under your left arm the minute you appeared in my hotel room that first morning. Well, don't reach for it, because I'm carrying one, too. Mr. Dollar, dear, I don't understand... Well, I do, now. I've wondered from the beginning just why you insisted on sticking so close to me from the minute I arrived here in Nicaragua. All right. I will tell you the truth. The whole truth. Even if it costs me a small, slight percentage of an election fees you're going to pay me for the unestimable assistance I've been giving you. Ask him. You just won't give up, will you? The money. It's not for you. The money. Like I get from all the Americans who come here to Nicaragua. Only from you it was not for sightseeing, guiding, but for all the help. Like, for instance, the money you've been getting from the landfills? I cannot tell a lie, Mr. Dollar. I did get some money from Mr. and Mrs. Lanzer, you know, for various and sundry services when first they came here. But why not, including the use of my radio sender? You see, if I hadn't known, they would pay me well for the using of my radio. Your unlicensed My radio. unlicensed radio, because a license costs too much. Why, I would never have been able to know about the wreck that didn't happen and so skillfully lead you to the Baldara Islands and all the clues that, that I... You know what I mean. What you really mean, Oscar, is that you expected a lot more from them if their crazy plan to collect on the insurance policies worked out. You sure? Because no, no, Mr. Dollar. No, I was only trying to help you. Think, Mr. Dollar, about all the things I've told you about. You were careful not to tell me a single thing that I wouldn't have learned anyway. Oh. Mr. Why did you insist right off the bat that we fly to Puerto Gardo, for instance? Why, of course. Apparently to help me for a small pittance, of course. <laughs> but actually it was to keep me out of the way while Constant Lanfear made contact with her husband here in San Juan del Perro. Oh, please, I, no doubt you I, worked that all out with her I, before you busted in on me that first morning. Then when we did get to Puerto Gardo, tried to prevent me from spotting the current would have taken any wreckage from the island to wash it ashore on the sandbar at Puerto Gardo. If the sea legs had gone down. That, that isn't... No, no, no. I, I told you about that strong current of the Adventure. Sure you did. But only because you realized at that point that I couldn't help finding out about it anyway. Mr. Dollar, you're making a crook out of Making me. a crook of you? Well, I have this little item, Oscar. When we started to land our plane and Douglas Lanford came at us with his car, you know as well as I do that you could have avoided it. Kept us from snapping off our landing gear and crashing. Oh, no. oh it was nicely done, too so that you wouldn't get badly hurt, but still be up and around to collect from land here for it. Oh, 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 Mr. Dollar, how can you even implicate such a horrible thing? You, my dear, my undying Because friend. of your little suggestion along the way that I unfastened my seatbelt and relaxed while you, I noticed, kept yours tight, oh, one thing oh, after another. Oh. And finally, of course, armed as you are, you not only let Gonzalez attack me, but you let Connie Lancer escape as well. And all for money. Money. That's all you've talked about. How did you figure to collect for all this? All right. It's true. It's true. All my life in every country in the world I've been... Whatever I have done has been because I love money. But I, I swear, Mr. Dalton, I would have never let them kill you. Because I do like you, Mr. Dalton. I, I almost... Even with all the money I could get from them, I almost gave it up. Yeah, for well, whatever you could get from me. Yes. And because you're such a nice man, I... I guess I'm not used to being around nice... Mr. Dollar. Well? Mrs. Lanky. What about her? Don't be too hard on her. It does all his games. She had such a strong hold over her. But isn't she that sometimes I almost thought she 
wish to have gone down more rest of the boat. What are you talking about? She's stolen it. Because by now she's so far in, she has to stick with him, don't you see? Ah, uh, yeah, I suppose that does make sense. All right, what else? That's all. I opened up my whole entire heart. <sighs> well. Mr. Dollar, for once in my life, I'm telling the truth. I thought maybe I could persuade you to pay me more than they could. Then I could be on your side, on the good side, just for one. But now, I, well, I guess I can only beg for your mercy. One thing you haven't told me, where Douglas Lampier is. You must know. Well, do you? Yes. Well, for maybe enough of a small pittance to get out of this country. Can't get over it, can you? Well, you haven't much of a choice this time. You will help me maybe just a little bit if, if I say. We'll see. I, I'm leaving on hope, Mr. Dollar, so I will tell you. Mr. Lanthier. Mr. Lanthier is right here. Uh -huh. And well-armed officer, ready to blow your brains out for what you just told this nosy insurance investigator. Don't be careful, please. Mr. Dollar, he, he has a gun. Yes, I know. Well, don't worry. I'll take care of it. Yes, sir. Well, I'll be right back. Thank you. Mr. Lanthier, I'm afraid I can't help you. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And if it is the last thing I do, the man who got me into this is going... Oh, no, you don't! Stop, stop, stop! So, it was after that I called Captain Ramirez to the Federal Maritime. Eh, somebody I'll that word. And let him take charge. Extradition proceedings for Connie are underway. The U.S. courts will have to take over with her. And Doug Lanthier's body is being shipped to the States. Oscar's body? Well, I left some money with Captain Ramirez for a decent burial. Expense account total? $841.95. Remarks? I wonder what kind of a deal Oscar Patrick Vladimir Pascaro was able to make at the pearly gates. Or wherever he was headed. And you know something... I kind of hope it was a pretty... Well, at least I hope it wasn't too bad of you. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> Next week, the promise of romance in the arms of a lovely girl and the threat of a knife in the back. Join us, won't you? Yours truly... Johnny Dollar. Your truly Johnny Dollar starring Bob Bailey is transcribed in Hollywood. It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone who also wrote this week's story. Heard in our cast were Harry Bartell, Lawrence Dobkin, Virginia Gregg, Harley Bear, Don Diamond, and Russell Thorson. Musical supervision by Amerigo Marino. Johnny Dollar has come to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.